given these assumptions, basically what you end up, if you've got a very big training set of words, you end up with a bunch of pairs of input output word pairs where you've got your center word and you've got your context word that occurs somewhere inside the context window. To actually build the skipgram model, so we basically want a whole bunch of probabilities for a context word occurring with some center word, okay? And we now need to answer two major questions. The one question is, how are we going to train our word embeddings? Um, what loss function are we going to use in order to train our model? That's, that's the one question that we always need to ask in machine learning land. And then the second question that we need to answer is, what is the structure that we're going to use for our um, word embedding approach? Basically, how are we going to map inputs to outputs? So let's first look at the loss function and then we look at the structure of the model. As is the case with many machine learning applications, we're going to use the negative log likelihood as our loss function, and we're going to try and minimize the negative log likelihood. Okay, so we've got a bunch of parameters, theta, which we haven't really spoken about. Um, that will become clear when we actually define the structure of the model, then we will know what the thetas are. So we want to minimize the negative log likelihood. Now, given the first assumption that each window is independent, what you will end up with is you will end up with by just multiplying together the probabilities of each of the windows. Okay, so according to the model, we've got the probability of the first window. Okay, so um, let's just call it window one given um, the center word one, okay? And window one, when I write this, I mean the context word. So the words that precede it and the words that follow W1, okay? And we're multiplying that with window two or the sequence of context words in window two given second center word times dunk, 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 dunk until we get to the very last um, center word, okay? So we're taking the log of that monstrosity. We can write that out a little bit more concisely by um, using this product notation. So we're going to take the product starting with the first center word up to the last um, center word and we've got p of theta given. Let's just write this out as the context words um, in window. Okay, and this is the window associated with little t and then sent to word little t. So this is all based on that first assumption that each of the windows is iid. Let's now um, expand this a little bit or just actually expand the notation. Um, so we're taking the product from uh, little t equal to one um, up to little t equal to big T. And then we've got p of theta, okay? and now we have here the context words, and I just want to note, denote them explicitly. So we've got the first word that is M before the center word. And what is M? M is now our window parameter. It basically says how far are we looking into the past and how far are we looking into the future. Okay, that's, that's M there. So in the example that we looked at before, M was 2 because we looked two words and before and um, two words following the center word. Okay, so we've got um, t minus the word at t minus m. Then we've got the word t minus m plus one and so on, dunk dunk dunk, up to the word just before the center word. Okay, and then we have the word just after the center word, dunk 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 dunk, up to t plus m. That's the very last word in our context we know. Okay. And then we've got our center word WT. Okay, so what is this? This is just all the words preceding my center word, all the words following my center word, just written out a little bit more explicitly. What the second assumption says is that the probability for each of these words in my context window is conditionally independent given the center word, which means I can actually write this as a product as well. So we've got minus log, and then the product from little t 
one up to big T. And now we end up with a product of T minus M times WT, T minus M minus one given WT, tink, 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 up to the probability of T plus N given WT. And we can write that out using product notation again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use J for the context word index. And J goes from minus M to um, capital M, okay? J won't be equal to zero, okay? Because we're not going to look at the word itself. And then we've got P of theta W T plus J given W T, okay? And this is based on the second assumption. So let's just note, note the assumptions here. Here we've used assumption one, okay? The IID assumption. And here we've now used assumption two, which um, basically says that each of the words are independent, conditionally independent, given the center word. Awesome. The magical thing about logs of products is that we can take the log inside and that makes optimization much, much easier. So we end up with this. We've got the negative and then we've got the sum from little t1 to t because the log of a product becomes the sum of the logs. And then we've got the j going from minus m to m, not equal to zero, because we don't want wt given wt. And then we've got here the log of p of theta with wt plus j given wt. And this is the skip gram loss function. I should add here that we very often normalize by the number of input output pairs, okay? And so very often we have a little one divided by the number of pairs normalizer that we just stick in front of here. And that's just because then, then we end up with a loss function that can be compared regardless of how many input output pairs you have in your data set. So if you have a million input output pairs or 1000 output pairs, then um, the scores are um, well, not exactly comparable, but they're at least in the same order. So that's the skip gram loss function. Now, the crucial question is, how do we define this probability? What is the structure that we use? If I give you one word and I give you a context word and I ask you, well, what's the probability of this um, context word given the center word? What's the probability? Tell me what's the probability. You need to define the structure of the model, basically saying, given this input, how do I get this output? Okay. And um, that's now where we will actually figure out what these thetas are. And the thetas will be all the parameters um, in our model.